accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 22 of Acts of 2022, signed by Governor on Friday, on February 15th, 2022, I announce that this meeting of the Select Board is being recorded by Hadley Media, the Select Board Office via Zoom, and ask if there is anyone present who is also recording this meeting. Let the minutes reflect that nobody else has indicated that they are reporting this meeting. So I move pursuant to general law chapter 30A section 20A3 that the board goes into executive session to strategy with respect to potential litigation um, to reopen in open session. As, as the chair, I determined that the public discussion of which would have a detrimental impact on the litigating position of the board. Second. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Glow? Chungalo? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. And Iser? Yes. Okay, so we'll move into uh, public comments, a 15 minute period. Um, please limit your comments to three minutes so that others uh, may have a chance to speak. Is there anyone here for public comment? <clears throat> no one's raising their hand. All right. Um, consent agenda warrants AP 2354, AP 2354R, AP 2354S, AP 2353, AP 2353S, AP 2355S, AP 2355, AP 2400V, AP 2401 AP 2401 S AP 2400 INS AP 2400 S PR 2400 PR 2320 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 PR 2
um, numbers and it was an increase in every single community. Um, but in um, May, we were reached um, out to from the town of Huntington, who then proceeded to join our district. So whatever we projected in your original budget, it has gone down because oh, the sorry. numbers you got, it went down because we had a new town. And we didn't really need to increase the hours at that point because the other communities are right there. So our office hours are right. Okay. All so, right. so yeah, so it did go up from year to year because our health insurance went up, but the, um, but the original budget that we proposed back in the spring actually went down some because okay. we now have a new community. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Then I did see Didi pop in. Didi, do you have input on a weight to measures? Yes. So um, way back, uh, weights and measures, they were billing us in August for the following year. And um, so what we decided to do is to change it and we put money into an, uh, the account so we could pay, make sure they got paid. So right now the money in there actually, um, it, they contracts each other. So it's just to make sure we always have money in the account. Um, I have, they did just do the inspections, but we had to pay the bill last August for the inspections that were just done this past spring. So now we do get extra, probably a couple thousand dollars extra a year that gets added to that account. So um, that's why we made it a, its own separate account now. Okay. Thanks, Judy. You're welcome. Um, make a motion to approve uh, the two intermunicipal agreements as presented. Second. Second. Motion, motion by Molly, second by Jane. Roll call vote. Or sorry, is there any discussion? Roll call vote. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. And Iser? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Food truck regulations? I have a question. In the cover letter we got, we can specify that. It talks about. Um, can Jane speak up? She's a little low. Maybe I'll put my microphone here. How's that? That's, That's great. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, in the discussion of this in our um, agenda, it says uh, section two talks about licensing only on public property. Section 8.1 mentions licenses on private property. It seems to appear that the select board will license food trucks on public and private property. This is exactly what we want. If not, <clears throat> if not the regs are not adequate. So when you actually look at the regs, there is a section it's called section nine, which says, you get there. Events licensed by the town of Hadley and food trucks hired for one day private events on private property are exempt from these regulations and do not require a license, provided they comply with 527 CMR fire prevention regulation and 105 CMR 590. So I don't know if that, is what we wanted to say or not? No. Nope. Can I can I explain that? Thank that, you. That was from planning. Yep. That was feedback from planning. Section nine is if somebody has a private party, like a wedding or a, a bridal okay. shower or something like that, and they have yeah. they have a food truck giving out food at that private party, it is exempt from the licensing. However, if a entity let's say uh let's just say uh um all of these wants to have a food truck in front of their property like a hot dog selling hot dogs for a couple of days a week that would need to be licensed and that would is where the private on private property <clears throat> and that is what something that we still want to have the select board issue a license for and if all these only wanted to have it for one day. Even if they only want to have it for one day because they're actually selling food at their private 
on their property. Okay, so it's a selling versus covered by your visiting. Co covered, on, 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 typically, and if you're having a wedding, people are coming, I mean, they are, the, the, the food truck is getting paid, but they're not getting paid by each person. They're not selling it to each individual. The person putting the party on will give them one lump check at the end of the day, so it's kind of a private, the public isn't invited. Okay, thank you. That makes it clear. So private parties, no. Open for business, people buying, yes. So what of our concerns has been, <clears throat> what if correct? someone wants to set up a, uh, rent a driveway along Route 9, park a food truck there, and sell to the people who are stuck in traffic? or the traffic workers. Um, they, we'd like to have some oversight over something like that. Yes. Yes. And we're not sure if these regulations provide that oversight. Yeah, that, that, that's what that comment means. It appears that it does between section five and section 8.1, I mean, section two, and section 8.1, but it's not exactly clear that it's required for that to have licenses. And I just, we would just like to see it made more clear. So the only thing I was gonna say, cause I thought when we had, um, I think Lisa Mead, mm -hmm. um, I don't know that the select board should be involved in those because the select board itself doesn't have purview over the private property, right? Is what my understanding was from that. Well, you issue a license to a food, to a, a, a restaurant, that is a private property. Yeah, we do all the licenses yeah. in town. I don't know why I was thinking that it, like, it wasn't for so us. There's a gap of, there's, there's a, a understanding gap here that on the one hand, uh, you do have the uh, common Vittler license. You do have the hawkers, peddlers, and tradespeople authority. You, you mm -hmm. have that authority. And at town meeting, we had, at Springtown meeting, we had a full bylaw to regulate food trucks. And at that time, I thought the ruling from Lisa Mead is that you, you as a select board had an inherent authority to take care of those things. And so we pulled the article to create a bylaw to regulate uh, food trucks. And um, then more recently, someone from her office was here and said, no, it can only, you can only regulate on public property. Uh -huh. So th there's, there's a gap here between what town council, town council is, you know, what they're saying and what we're looking for seem to not have meshed yet. So Amy, if it would help, we did get that feedback from planning yesterday. I forwarded those questions to legal. I haven't heard from them back specifically because that vagueness was brought up at the last time. Okay. Are we, um, I mean, I, I don't feel like we're prepared because nope. of this to vote tonight. So I would say not. Um, are we holding anything up? Is there anybody no. in limbo right now no. while we're dealing with this? The no, only okay. place that's operating with a food truck right now is already operating. And they're already operating. And that was, that was intentional on y'all's behalf, y'all. While this is being decided, mm -hmm. that, that is still, that they are operating fully licensed by the Board of Health and the fire okay. department have done their inspections. So it's just your transient hawker. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So this will be on next right. agenda. So let's, yeah, let's table this. It is, and there's also the issue about a, a public hearing for every food truck permit. So public hearing, it might not be the right word. We might want to readdress that because y'all do vote on every transient hawker peddler license, every one day alcohol license. Mm -hmm. And that's just sort of the way of doing business within the town of Hadley and in any other town, frankly. Right. If you want to hold an event in town, you go, you find out what the schedule is and you do it and you make your schedule adjust to their schedule. Mm -hmm. And that's just how businesses operate. Y'all are the licensing authority and authority in town with jurisdiction of this. So mm -hmm. first and third Wednesdays of the month, 48 hours in advance. It's, it's, it's pretty yeah, it's reasonable. Usually on the consent time. agenda. I'm right? sorry. Isn't it usually on the consent agenda, right. unless it's something controversial. Yeah. But, but, I, I, also, I also asked the attorney that question as well. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So we need to take out the public hearing because this is the public let's, hearing. Let's wait for the um, okay. let's okay. wait for town council to give me a response. Okay. If I don't think it's clear, I'll also re re uh, reply uh, CC planning and see if they understand it. If it's clear, if they have additional questions, I'll send it back to legal. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, um, so that Jim have something to say. He was kind of wanted to say something there, Jim. Well, I was just saying that the public hearing. The way it's worded, public hearing is a specific process. If mm -hmm. legal notice in a newspaper or sick of the says that, that the applicant shall pay for the cost of a public hearing. So I think what what you intend and what the wording is, like you're right, it's it's two different things. And it, you don't want the if you would the legal public hearing for what you're doing, you just want a hearing to the public without all the notification and the cost. Because that's a that's a huge burden on everybody and probably a very unnecessary one. Okay. That sounds fair. Thank you. All right, moving on. So it's it's tabled until the first week of August, correct? Yes. Just to let the planning board know, Jim and Bill, that it's it'll be tabled till the first yep. week of uh, August. Yep. Tech, this 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 food truck regulation actually came from the bylaw committee and the planning board got involved when um, we found out that it wasn't permitted anywhere. So it's actually both both boards are working on it. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Moving on to new business, 6.1, uh, veterans banners. We do have Pam here as well as um, are as Steve, veterans um, service officer, BSO. I was gonna say BSO, but I should. I was like, oh, I need to say the acronym. Yeah. Oh, I got one here. Yeah, thank you. Pull it back towards you, please. Sorry, hear us on the line. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know somebody distributed information over to everybody so you could see it. Um, just trying to honor our veterans and get some of the banners up. My thought was to put them up the same place where there's flags, um, that way, because that's where they are right now. <laughs> um, I think those are the best spot. Um, the program works where um, the um, we get a sponsorship from a family, a veteran's family, um, the flags, and I've ordered one. I don't have it yet. It'll come in tomorrow, <laughs> but I can have it for you. It's a sample. It's 24 inches by 48 inches. Um, gets strapped to the telephone poles. Um, East Hampton has them. Westfield has them. Belchertown has them. West Springfield is working on a program as well. Um, it is a military banner program that's across the country. They're trying to get it into all the cities across the country as best they can to honor all the veterans in the town. Um, we are looking to, um, the minimum order is 30. We're looking to get possibly, my goal is 75. We have a ton of veterans in this town. There's, I talked to the Legion, they put out 300 flags onto veterans' graves every year. And there's um, 60 members of the American Legion right now. 90% of them are veterans. And then there's other ones that we just that I can't account for. But it's basically a sponsorship. A family will sponsor a banner. Um, price isn't set in stone. It's anything we want to um, charge. But it's 150, 160 for the other towns that are doing it. So um, that seems like a very fair price. The banner itself is $110. That's printed on both sides. Um, and then we have to also pay for the um, brackets to put it up on the telephone poles. So 150, 160 would cover all of those costs. Um, I, they go up from Memorial Day to Veterans Day, and then they come down. The program works where if the families that sponsor them, if they want to take the banner after we take them down that first year, they're welcome to them. They paid for them. Um, there are other options if they want to choose to leave it with the town so we can put it up again next year. There's a printed version of the banner or one of those little garden flags. They can get either one of those as well so that they will have a replica in their hands and then we can continue to keep putting them up um, every year. Um, Does it, it have to 
does it have to be a picture? <laughs> I'm out in the. I'm up here in the world. Does does it have to be a picture, Kim? No, it, and it's Pam, but no, it does not have to be a picture. It's whatever the family, whoever, whoever's sponsoring it, they can put whatever they want. It, it does allow for a picture, the um, brands that they're in, the years they served, any medals or honors that they um, received. But um, we can very customize them very much to the person that is on the banner. And if you choose not to have a picture, you can just put more information. And then I believe there were um, two... So the, the banners themselves, they're about 150. And then also I think there are ones for that are actually free for families as well. Right. So yeah, the gold star, if somebody's a gold star from 1999 forward, if it's a gold star family, the program itself will pay for those free. Those are free. And then anybody who is recently enlisted, if they just enlisted, they will also have be able to get a banner for free. So it covers everybody from just being enlisted now to all of our veterans. So I think it's a great program and a great honor. So what I was thinking, and the board is welcome to to chime in, I think this would be a great private project to give you the ability to to kind of take charge, take the lead and own it. And then after you would come back to the board and essentially just ask us for space, so, right? Yeah, so um, all of what you said is right on board. I have it all written. Yeah. It's in your notes. Mm -hmm. The thing to remember is when a veteran isn't a veteran isn't a veteran. In other words, you want to have a committee that would basically have a check and balance about what you're doing. Now, the first thing you need to know is, is where you're putting them up. Mm -hmm. And if it's the same polls and they're all owned by the town, then that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. There are communities that put them up on the telephone thing, the power. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to get permission for that. So mm -hmm. wherever you're going to put them, you have to figure out how many polls they're going to be, mm -hmm. which will then tell you how many banners you can put up for a year. Or I say the same as what she was saying is you do it from Memorial Day till November because then you can put them up another year and give them to them before they get worn out. You keep them up all year long, the They're, winter does yeah. damage to them. And so they're probably good for two years. If you take them down, you'd probably get three or four years out of them. But who's, how many polls do you have? Who's going to go up first? All of those kind of decisions, you really want to have a committee with a chair to go over that and decide because uh, we do monuments and ceremony, monuments and uh, name recognition all in all of our towns. Um, I now have a new guy who's usually here on uh, Wednesdays. He's great at research. So he researches Somebody says, oh, he's done two of our monuments mm -hmm. and found out three of them are the same person and a couple of them are not even the residents and they didn't actually meet the criteria, but you really have to do research to find that out. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a ton of veterans in Hadley, and, but who gets on it? It's up to the families mm -hmm. unless we can do some fundraising to lower the cost mm -hmm. is one idea. Um, but whoever wants to do it, you have to kind of prioritize who goes up first, because if you have a hundred, but you only got 20 poles, uh -huh. you have an issue. So, so I have a question. You said you come November 12th, they come down mm -hmm. and let's say I have taken one for my family. Do you use that one again? Come Memorial you have the day? option of keeping it right yourself or leaving it with the town and let us put it up again. And then you would get the option again when we take them down the year after. Okay, It, it is yours, you've paid for it. It makes me really nervous from my seat here to say, you're gonna give something to the town because that just means we have to store it. And I'm not saying that we can't, but I think, I think this is personally, I like the idea. I think that we can put it as a, a second vote and do it in two weeks, but I think that we should approve so that they have they know they're going to have this possibility and then you go out and do it and it's all in your lap. Oh, you're frozen. 
when somebody posts. The other thing I would say is, is um, and you'll see it on one of your pages, um, we've got the military tribute banners that are done by hometown. Um, they are approximately $150 right now with all the fixings. But the city of Hoyo, if you look on another page, they did it back in 2018. Mm -hmm. Now, theirs were cheaper before 4% inflation or 8%, whatever it was. But they also had a local printer do that. Okay. So there could be an investigation of if, is there a local print service that would do the same thing? It, wouldn't, it couldn't say hometown heroes. But they could do all like Hoyle, and they could put the city, the town seal of Hadley at the top, and either a picture or all the information. So there's a lot of variables you can you can do with this. And if we go to one of the locals like down the road here and say, "What would you charge us?" It might be cheaper, and it might be easier for families to do. But again, we have to figure out how many we can put up on a given year, which would also decide. Do you want, if there's, if there's 10 polls and 20 people want it, then you're going to do 10 and next year you're going to do the other 10. Or Scott, how many American flags do we put up? I, I don't do it, dog. Uh, it goes to the fire. Yeah, I tried to get, okay. I tried to track him down last weekend and I couldn't. I, I didn't know that you wanted to know that. We know it because okay. we're the ones who buy the flags. So okay. there is a number I can give it to you before your next think, meeting. I mean, I think that would be a number to start with. And you look if you want if you look at the flags because they're up now. If you come down Middle Street, it's like every other pole has a flag on it. So if we can mimic in between those flags with the banners, we would have some kind of an idea of how many we we could put up. If That's Middle Street or West Street. Street. Um, Middle Street right here. When I was coming down, every other pole has okay. a flag on it. So and who owns it. those poles? Verizon. Yeah, okay, so you, you have to ask permission of Verizon for the other poll. Oh, it's definitely work to be done, but yeah, but it's definitely yeah, you can do it. You just, would, but would um, would this be under the purview of the select board? No, I think just saying yes, we approve of it. I don't think we want I mean, anything to do with the management day to day of it. Well, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. that's I not think, exactly true because who's going to put them up and who's exactly. going to take them down? Right. It's okay. gonna be, that's yeah. got to be done by the town, I would think, well, all right, unless so you the, hire Verizon. The town has to do that, but the town doesn't want to say, okay, Steve, we're putting up your flag. Sorry, Pam, you're not having yourself. No, that's why you're That's why the committee so important. Committee. You don't want right. one person making that decision. Right. And if I can just overemphasize the resources that you can get from your veteran service organization, mm -hmm. they're... Just like talking about the criteria, um, I think it is important. It doesn't have to be a large committee, but I yeah. do think. Well, I do know on the Hadley community page when it was brought up, just as a conversation, mm -hmm. right? There was at least two or three people that said they yeah. would gladly help, but nobody wanted to spearhead it. So that would be <laughs> 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 like That's a, yeah, up for the idea. Right. But I do know um, with the hometown, they verify all the DD 12s, they verify everything. Um, but I would. Yeah, we just Keep have a local guy, guy who well, can really so do the... Make sure that they're all in jail. Yeah, because so, yeah, I'm telling you, we've done monuments. And, 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 we are, might, and we might be able to enlist the um, American Legion, you know, to at least if we felt like we needed a place to store them or whatever. I'm sure that, you know, those guys are more than willing to participate with with the I've, actually, I've actually already talked to them because I wanted to know how many we how many flags we put on the graves just right. to get an idea yep. of veterans. They are willing yep. to help in any way, shape, or form they can. Yeah, we okay. should have them at least be on the regular committee. And one of my staff, if not me, would also be on the committee. So we, so if um, if we did create a committee, um, then it would also be under open meeting yes. law and all of but that. But we don't want to create the committee. I think that's what Steve is suggesting. Yeah, you, somebody's got to create the committee. I mean, it's you're, not, you're talking about authorizing the committee. Is that correct, Jane? I'm saying, why can't you just say, here I am. I've decided I want to do this for the town select board. Is it okay if we use the flag? Right. And then we go on our way. And they go on their way. And then they have nothing to do with us. Just I don't, like I don't know just, why we don't want it to have anything to do with us. Well, 
Do we want another committee? Is the question. It's a unique purpose, and it's a very. And we will give them a clear charge. It would make sense. Yeah. And, and I'd, be, would, I'd be on. I'd be on that committee. There you go. All right, Joyce. Thank All right, you. and because the fire department. It would have to be involved. Is yeah, right? it's think, involving city streets and city here. I mean, yeah. town streets and Love town. my veteran. And you may not need to have them on the committee, but you want to have them. Like, I doubt Scott's going to want to sit on there because it's most likely, usually, typically, it's DPW who could set stuff up there and fire. Mm -hmm. But um, you might just be able to use them as a resource, and they may be able to caution you of, well, you can't do this, you can't do that. Exactly. I think you can have a small committee, and I don't know that you have to think of that committee right away. This is not an overnight. Right, 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 right. So I think maybe um, I, I do think have that you guys it, that they're better in a better position, however, to go forth with their task if they say we have the blessings from the select board and we have actually said that. So we need to figure out how we want to structure it and and let you have it and then go with it. And then there would be a a question of if it became because if we. Everybody's thinking too much into this. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about financials. I, 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 I think the advantage of having veteran services here is they have resources, and that's the discussion the committee can take. What is the best way? Okay. Um, and especially if you're going to be using any kind of town resources, any finances that you're going to be using, you want accounting for. So right. I think that that I, I can just see Steve's head thinking. He's got all these answers. But I think we need to let them get together, say who should be on this, and then maybe come back and say this is who we would like on the committee. Or right. even, you know. We, we will form a committee, but we do have to have you guys sanction it because it's going to be using town. Right. And I make a motion. I make a motion to sanction this committee and to get it underway um, and allow Steve to set it up, come back to us, and tell us what he <clears> wants to do. Um, and then we can move forward. So, yeah. so, so uh, clarification for a second on that one. Yeah. Um, from a language standpoint, Joyce, um, yeah. maybe, maybe clean what we it can up. clean it up, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> clean up, Joyce. Yeah, since it is going to be a, a committee that the select board is actually appointing, um, yes. we could just ask Steve and Pam and whoever else they want to work with to assume. Uh, presume that you have our support to move forward and then at the next meeting when you're ready come back with a proposal to us yep. um, yeah and then we can uh formally um move to you know approve the mission and appoint the committee at that point yes. right okay does that work for you that works. Okay. yeah <clears throat> i'll second that for discussion please oh, i sure. just want to be i want to be clear i want to be clear on what is expected of the town other than the select board's blessing to let you move forward with this. Uh, as Amy said, there's expenses involved, and I think everybody needs to understand exactly what you're going to be asking the town to do. So what we, what we, we, blah, 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 blah. What we would be asking the town to do is to hang them up, put the brackets on the poles, put them up in the beginning of May, and then after the first week of November, take them down and do that each year as we go through the banners. Okay, thank you. If you could probably add that to the proposal and then even put um, right. so, a timeline on it, what you yeah. think the start and stop would yeah. be. Yeah, and, and like I say, I would like to do just some pricing um, and then, yeah, that's definitely it. we can work on and the committee can decide. I really like to have a five member at least committee decided because you're always going to have somebody saying, well, why didn't my dad go up? Right. right. And so we need to come up with a criteria who goes up first. If you've got more than whatever polls, I don't know how many polls, but we can count them. Yep. That's why I, was, that's why I figured if we knew how many flags, it's basically almost the same. Well, we're, we're, and I can get you those numbers, but we're, we're, the minimum we're, order is 30. Yeah. I think we'll have that. Well, with oh, the God. hometown, yeah. we'll have that no problem. I was shooting for 70. Okay. So as much well, as you'll have more than 75. The families want to sponsor. Yeah, right. 
Okay. If somebody else wants to sponsor it after that, but it won't come from the town. No. We will get no. outside if we don't have enough family sponsors to get enough, we'll just go. I mean, Lowe's and Home Depot are huge for military. I'm sure a lot of town, a lot of companies and businesses in town will donate as well. So. Okay. So the motion was by Molly. The second was by Randy. No, I motioned. No, she, well, she, uh, she cleaned you up. She cleaned you up. So motion was by you. Amended motion was by Molly. <laughs> and the second to the amended motion was by Randy. Sure, oh. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call. Ready? Roll call vote. Roll call vote. Uh, Keegan? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Iser? Yes. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Amy, if I can just, before they go, if I can just ask you if, since people are showing an interest to be on the committee, um, that probably should come through our office so that we can, at, at some point, if say you get 10 people who you want to be able to bring it to the select board, because you will have to help, they can make recommendations, but you'll want to have that be that decision maker. And try to be an odd number. I, I was just going to That is good. So can I like put it out on the community page and see who's interested? And we'll go from yep. there. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. And the thank email you. address is sandersjamesj at hadleyma.gov. You. you did. That's right. We're good. good. So the thank email you address. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. I'm honored. Sounds like fun. Thank you, guys. All right. All right, so moving on to new business 6.2, uh, special town meeting warrant. So we're gonna vote to open up the warrant. Simply vote to open up. Make a motion that we open the warrant for the special town meeting to be held October. Thursday, October 26th. Yes. Second. Motion by Molly, second by Joyce. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. And Iser? Yes. Thank you. 6.3, employee appointments, uh, fire department, police department, seniority list, and employee appointments, right? Yes. These are... Can I re uh, mute Randy till the motorcycle is on? loud. <laughs> it's motorcycle. Uh, Yes, these are the t yearly appointments for the employees. Um, I got so carried away with my boards and committees spreadsheet that I, I left all of us poor employees off. So I just need y'all to uh, Im appoint all of us again for the next year. So can I ask a, a, just questions? Sure. So when I look at the list, I'm on just like the town official one. Uh huh. So these aren't all the town employees. They are not. These so are like, the, why, why are some people left off? Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to appreciate my answer. Maybe Troy can rescue me with your HR, but these are the employees that y'all have traditionally appointed. And these are the ones that we continue to appoint. I don't know if the, every employee should be appointed or not, but this is the, the, the list that we have traditionally used for time and on. Well, and, like, I mean, just looking quickly, I just mentally go through town hall, right? So, um sue's on here but kim's not on here. so actually that's because mgl says that the town collector appoints the assistant collector so okay, even though so sue's appointed yeah. sue has the authority to appoint both kim and then there's actually a deputy collector who does the other things that's no. so it's it's there's a lot of mgls behind this but that since sue and um Sue and Linda are both no longer elected. That's why they're both on there. But they both have appointing authority under them, under MGL. So are we, so I'm, um, do we still appoint them even though they're under contracts? Um, so Susan's contract will be up in 2024. And I believe Linda's is as well. So they're, they're but they're on here. They're just carried over. Lynn, if you'll notice, Carolyn's contract is on there, but it's also an adjusted date. Mike Specknables is on there. His is the, to the adjusted date. Okay. But then what about like the electrical inspectors are this year? Oh, I, I just, I just missed it. Oh, there's okay, no, I said it there was a, a rationale. No, there. That there's no rationale. Jennifer just missed it. But it's a good question. Let's, yeah. let's look, let's dig that up. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. I, okay. Unfortunately, we'll have it. 
that's fine. Yeah. But I would love you to do that. And then, because I think uh, when we enter into contracts, sometimes that you might appoint them as a contract time and, and their period of appointment is three years. So it's not necessarily that we're you know, blanket appointing everybody July 1st because of the contract requirements. So that's what we, we really need to clean up a little bit and take a look at it and say, okay, does it make more sense to appoint everybody at the beginning of the fiscal year? Who's required for that to be there because some of the appointments vary in duration of the And so, do we need, need to we do this to tonight or? Um, I, I, I memories coming to me i'm sorry i'm gonna cut you off no this has to do with insurance purposes and david nixon always had us reappoint um for the fiscal years for insurance coverage for all, to make sure that all the employees were covered on this list that were covered by insurance is why we had always done it traditionally in the past was for insurance purposes but if, if we vote this tonight i mean I, as far as i know everybody works for us that's on here so but if we go ahead and we vote this tonight um if you and Troy or, or Troy does some research and wants to change it. We're okay, right? You could come back to us and say, hey, I'd like you to update that vote. Okay. All right. Sue, Sue wants to say something. Oh, Sue, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know. Um, I do have authority under Mass General Law to appoint Kim and the deputy collector, but it's always with your approval. So you folks are, are notified of that. And mm -hmm. We don't normally handle it in the first couple of meetings. Um, and honestly, uh, everyone who is paid by the town um, as an employee is covered under our insurance. Um, unless, I mean, I, I can't even imagine uh, an instance where that would become an issue, so. That's all I want to say. All right. Well, I have a question. Well, my question. Looking at the, looking at the town list, I see the COA director. I don't see the library director, but she's, I know he's under the trustees. She's under the trust. He's under the trustees. So yeah. the trustees do the appointments, but we pay them because yeah. it's in our budget line for the library. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and are we? Uh, so is this a, like an annual thing for the insurance purpose or are we not voting on people for 2025 and 2026 for their next appointment on this list? Well, my, question, my question is, is why are we even doing this when we hire somebody? That doesn't mean that we need to reappoint them every year. It, when it, you it doesn't. I'm going to find a reason. Say that again. Okay. Yeah, it's very it's it's any town I've worked in. There's an annual appoint reappointment. Okay. So and, and you, uh, you're either designated as an appointed okay. employee or not. So I really think let let uh, Troy do his homework and he'll get he knows exactly what you're looking for and okay. we'll find out the reasoning why and exactly who needs to be on that list. Okay, so okay. table it tonight. Table Don't us. make the vote. Okay. Um, I would recommend to take it. Okay. okay. Because of the insurance question, why you you would hire somebody and have to keep reappointing them? That seems ridiculous. We're going to get educated, Joyce. <laughs> I guess so, but I don't. I don't like. I say I don't understand it. So if Troy can educate. That's great. Good. So we have a motion in a second. Just because we've always done it doesn't mean that we should just blind. Do we have a motion in a second? Did, did you? Uh, he said uh, tra oh, table. 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 We're tabling it. No, you're not tabling. Table. Table. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right, moving right along then. Okay, DPW Director Contract Performance Review. Troy is here. Troy. As is Scott. Good evening. Good evening. All right, so this is just gonna be a quick overview of what you guys have already um, filled out um, individually. Um, Can you throw that into the slide chain? It already okay. is, but why did it should be it that way? Let's see if I can. I, I, I appreciate, but. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Why isn't it doing it? Mine's on. Thanks. 
we'll let Alex fix this real quick. You're good at this stuff. Aha. Uh -huh. I know why. You want to duplicate that piece? Oh, you're like legit. Right? Like, put all of our comments up in here for everyone <laughs> to read. <laughs> I sent you the reading. Wait, I don't know what Are you trying to share? I am sharing. I think I know why. We don't need to go into it. Just move them up to a single person and he can do it from like this. It's fine. What am I doing? Single person. Get rid of all the people on the side. And just, he can do it from there. It's fine. There we go. All right, we'll move forward. Uh, so basically, we're just going to cover everything that was uh, that was on the performance evaluation. I'll give a, just a brief overview of the background information. So where this all came about was that uh, on September 21st of last year, 2022, the board and the select board entered to an employment agreement contract with uh, uh, Director McCarthy, uh, and then appointed him as the DPW director that contract uh, is actually current until October 1st of 2023. Um, but section four of the uh, uh, of subparagraph D of the contract did state that the DPW director and select board will meet for a performance review and update at the change of the fiscal year of 2023. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at now in July of 2023 and why we uh, conducted the performance review. So my thought when we wrote that was that we would sit down and Scott would say to us, because we don't have a lot of information about what he does. This is what I have done in the last year. No. These are things I have on my goal list and I cannot reach them because there isn't money or I have done this even without having money or we got an extra grant. But he would inform us what he was doing rather than us saying, what have you done? Or this is how we think you've done it. When, we have no information about that. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, you know, there, it wasn't clearly, clearly outlined in that contract. So I think moving forward is just no, something that we, frozen. no, something that we clearly define moving forward because uh, after reviewing some of the other um, contracts, it's clearly defined. Like uh, for example, chief spank Nabel, his, this is clearly defined where you'll talk about goals and so on and so forth. So if we look at some of the language and kind of cross, uh, make sure that our contracts are consistent and congruent moving forward. I think we'll be able to repair some of those things. Well, let's just move forward here. Moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so re really, you guys all know this uh, stuff. Uh, so really, it's just fat facts based i simply extracted exactly what you put on the evaluation um so th those are the uh, leadership or evaluated competencies organizational positional human and interpersonal professional political community uh relate uh leadership as well as relationships with boards committees and direct supervisor the rating scale was one to five one being the lowest and five being the highest Um, so this is how it shook out um, for organizational leadership. Uh, in summary, uh, for organizational leadership, the board rated uh, a Scott at a 4.5. Positional leadership, um, again, overall, uh, the overall rating was a 4.25. And then human and interpersonal, the overall rating was a 4.8. Uh, professional leadership, the overall rating was a 4.0. Uh, political and community leadership, the overall rating was a 4.6. And then relationships with boards, committees, and direct supervisors. The overall rating was a 4.6. And so the overall rating on a five point scale was a 
And then there were some additional specific areas of strengths and improvement and opportunities, which you guys all evaluated. I'm not going to read them because you guys all know what you wrote. And then there were some recommended three, six, and 12 month goals, which I think um, you guys all know what you wrote um, and, we'll, and we'll be able to uh, set some of those guidelines as Jane talked about um, moving forward. So that was it for that presentation. Pending your comments or questions? Yeah, I just want to, so first of all, Scott, for just from my standpoint, um, where I come from, meeting expectations when you're not even a full 12 months into a brand new job is actually a good thing. Um, so I don't want you to read anything, you know, into me giving it three other people where they did fours and fives. Um, I think my comments will speak for themselves, you know, in terms of um, my, you know, my thoughts about how you're doing. Um, again, kind of piggybacking off of what uh, Jane was pointing out, I also um, think that it would be appropriate for us to, um, we didn't get any feedback from, when, when we did Carolyn's review, there um, was a strong feeling about getting feedback from peers and from mm -hmm. employees. Um, in your job, I'm not so sure about the direct reports, but certainly the peers. Uh, part of my comments about your interpersonal skills being so strong or because I know for a fact, I've heard nothing but great things from uh, your working colleagues, you know, about the, the public safety team and everything you guys do together. So I think it would be nice again, as Troy, you know, gets into his new role um, to help us do a better job, making sure we're getting a full and complete picture because we are just that much removed from your, your day to day. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I mean, I think the numbers speak for themselves. Um, obviously we're really, Really glad that decision that we all made together back in uh, September or whatever it was last year. Thank you. Now, do we have a, um, do you have any goals or is that something that comes up later where you present your goals as to us as well for the coming year? My recommendation would be when you um, sit down to meet with Scott in an executive session is that's where we'll outline goals for the following year. Okay. Yep. I just have one request. Um, Scott, I, you saw my review on you, so I don't need to reiterate what, what I wrote. Um, but one thing, though, could you put the town of Hadley on your truck? Because nobody knows that it's our, our truck. Yeah, <laughs> How is that, I, How yes, is that happening? <laughs> yes, uh, that was, that was uh, the past uh, chairman preferred it not to be on there because he had too many calls when the vehicle was out of town at meetings, et cetera, et cetera. And he said that he preferred to keep it off like an unmarked police vehicle or whatever, that it didn't need oh. to be. People get out of your way on the highway, so. I, I most certainly do it. Yeah, I, th I think it needs to be marked as a, as a town of Hadley. And very proud that you drive the truck and we you have a good truck to drive and if you have to go to meetings that's our business not anybody else's so don't worry about it yeah yes i understand <laughs> and, okay. and to, to joyce's point there are other vehicles in town that don't have the town of hadley written on the sides and and i got questioned about that the other day so i guess we need to look into why not every vehicle that the town owns has does not have town of Hadley on its side. Yeah, thank you, Randy. I appreciate that too. Do you have any um, questions or comments for us? <laughs> I, I appreciate you taking the time to do the review. Uh, I, I really appreciate your honesty with, you know, where improvements can be made and suggestions. And, you know, I, I like working here. I, I appreciate uh, to, to town and the people. Uh, I just look forward to moving forward and being better. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Super. Can't yeah. ask for more than that, Scott. Yeah. Well, you've had a rough year. Like I said, you had a rough year with all that Route 9 shit going on and uh, <laughs> I was, I was digging you, it up. And, 
our putting our water lines in and doing all of that and you you've done a good job with all that and in making sure we had our uh things in order out there also so thank you oh thank all you right. yeah, not to mention uh to mention uh picking up just random things to blow off the back of people's pickup trucks um, yeah. when you're going on yeah. Route 47 in front of my car so oh. <laughs> I do whatever needs to be done. I loved it. I was laughing too. And other things, though, is that you've had a hard time trying to, you know, keep our residents happy that have had to endure uh, a lot of the goings on with Route 9. And you've been very communicative with them, and um, they've appreciated it. And uh, so I thank you for that too. Yeah, I appreciate that, Joyce. It's just the Route 9 project, every time I think that things are kind of, starting to smooth out the unfortunately the road gets rough again and it's just the uh just the nature of the construction i guess mm -hmm. yeah, i guess we're all waiting for the final finality of it all that's for sure <clears throat> all right well thank you um troy needs to stay because we're going to do the code of conduct guidelines for town board commissions and committees Yep. Uh, so basically, uh, you have before you or you've seen the uh, the new uh, code of conduct uh, guidelines for towns, boards, commissions and committees. Uh, the reason why this has come about is uh, March 7th, the uh, Supreme Judicial Court ruling in the town of Southborough case between Barron and Kalinda uh, basically, you know, made some impacts to this and uh, Really, this new um, code of conduct is really set uh, to kind of help guide uh, us as municipal officials um, to proceed forward uh, in the current environment uh, post decision by the SJC. So um, it's really out there to help us, help guide us, help board our help guide the board, um, our commissions and committees here in town. Uh, one question on the code of conduct. Yes, ma'am. Uh, under section five, it says distribution and education, um, and then it refers to the town clerk, um, the town clerk's responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Does the town uh, clerk has she been involved in this? Does Jess know? She, I haven't communicated with her personally. Um, I know when I reviewed it, um, because this was developed by Maya, wasn't mm -hmm. developed right, by right. us, yeah. um, and, and then distributed to um, the MMA. Um, I know she already does those tasks, yeah. so it, mm -hmm. I think it's a seamless thing, um, but I will make sure that Jessica does receive that. Just, to just don't want to verify. surprise Jess. Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> yeah, and she did, I noticed this time when, um, I went to get sworn in for a couple of committees. She did a, a nice little, like, yep. hey, state ethics training, like, yep. here you go. Here's where you find your code of conduct. And that's how I know that she does it, because I see people walking around with yep. the card. So everything in that clause is certainly something that she's already been doing and will continue to do moving forward. I did have a question on Section 4, because I know that we tread very lightly on the freedom of speech and the yes. first amendment rights. So um, I'm just looking to know, so as far as actionable items mm -hmm. for conduct, um, how I read it, I'm sorry, you're so tight-lipped right now. <laughs> Me too. Okay, so all persons addressing the public body shall conduct themselves in a peaceable and orderly manner. Such persons may not make true threats of violence or incite imminent lawless conduct by others. Period. And then it goes on to encourage, but not lawfully actionable. Exactly. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna back away from that because I am not an attorney, mm -hmm. um, and I will say that this was uh, presented. There was a series of, of webinars that were hosted uh, mm -hmm. by Maya in partnership with the MMA. 
Um, and then they did do a question and answer um, forum, what was it, Tuesday or yesterday? Um, on this specifically where people had the opportunity. So if you have specific questions and related, and related if I would just ask that you email those to me and I'll make sure that they get presented up to Maya to make sure that we have full clarity and understanding of, of what that implication is. Um, Cause does this fall under the, some of that section fall under the Smith Mond Modernization Act of 2012? Yes, I, I mean, I should know. I, That's I can't answer question. that question for you. All I know is that it was vetted by their attorneys. The, the attorneys had, you know, put this. And put it's, this it, it was as a result of that case. Yeah. That, that case specifically uh, made some huge implications to that clause specifically. Okay. So it, hopefully that answers the question a little bit. It does. The, yeah, it the might... goal here is us to protect the boards and the committees mm -hmm. in these situations. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, my understanding from this too, from, you know, every municipality handles things differently and having and Maya pull this all together in one, so that kind of the 350 plus municipalities have the opportunity to adopt something that's consist consistent across yep. the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. um, and to be frank, I mean, uh, this is great because for the committees that I'm on, we you know we can make sure that they have this along with the um, the handbook that you're going to talk about next. And somebody can't say, "Well, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do that." I mean, it's it's right in here. And if we accomplish nothing else, we're just setting expectations for behavior. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. And I think that's where the SJC ruling came from, is because to Molly's point, is that there were different varying. Uh, degrees of this and um, you know this kind of standardized it and you know hats off to Maya and the MMA for pulling this together. Okay all right do we need to vote on these do we, we need to vote on this separately from the code of conduct or all together? <clears throat> I think we, we should probably do separate. Separate? separate. I agree. Okay. Um, I make a motion that we um, approve the code of conduct guidelines for town boards, commissions, and committees effective uh, July 19th, 2023. Second. Motion by Molly, second by Jane. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Iser? Yes. Thank you. He's got a trolley in back of him. <laughs> Every time he's put to speak. Your timing is not very good, Jennifer. He wants to get on that trolley and go into town, don't you? That's cute. All I've, right. been on, I've been on that trolley. <laughs> All right, so the handbook. The handbook, um, full transparency. This was something that was in the works prior with my predecessor, uh, prior to me coming on board, um, received it back from the legal counsel the other day. Simply what you have in front of you is, uh, as part of my contribution, was a matter of spell check and grammatical uh, corrections. Um, so this with, is effectively the one we've already seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, in a sense, and I think, um, and again, in light of the SJC counsel, the, our, our decision um, or ruling, um, the council, when I reviewed his comments, um, those had now been injected into the handbook as well. So <clears throat> what, what is in the code of conduct is also mirrored in the handbook as well. And, um, the handbook, there's a signature page. Yep. Um, so I know we talked about this a little bit before, but who's, could you just, whose responsibility is it to make sure that every sitting appointed committee member or elected official? I, I would I would offer that the chair of each board uh, commission or committee um, ensure that this handbook will ensure it's distributed to each uh, member. And then it's the responsibility of the chair of each board commission or committee to ensure that their members um, 
submit that back and then we get those in a consolidated manner so that way we're not getting 800 different emails it just comes from a chair back to the back to uh Jennifer. yeah okay yeah <laughs> no, that's that. what we had talked about so um assuming that we go ahead and prove this tonight troy yes ma'am will the chairs be responsible how, how do we make sure that this gets to all of the committee chairs so and that they're instructed to do this between jennifer and i will make sure that it gets okay. to all the chairs right we Troy, do you want to talk about too, like the kind of the rollout of it? That's one of the things we've been talking about is to really do a true training um, for for board members, and also um, we, that is a part of our contract with legal to help with that to be able to provide some of that support uh, and, and trainings. And and just the other thing too, as we, um, I, I think I'm, I'm going back to five where you got a lot, little nervous about did did uh, the clerk see all this because it it does add and uh, develop a schedule of training programs. But Troy and I are talking about that. That certainly wouldn't be putting dumping it on Jess and say, develop this, because I think we, we're on the yeah. same page. We need to get everybody at the same table at the same time, record it, and have that be a part as well, that yeah. they watch that webinar if they couldn't attend. And it really speaks to Molly's point about standardizing things yeah. and making sure that not only across the state, but here in our community, that all of our boards, commissions, and committees are all trained aware uh, and to Carolyn's point, we'll make sure it's recorded because as we all know, we can't pin everybody down one time, one location, uh, but it's something that we'll coordinate with our council and make sure that that is available to all the boards, committees and commission members. So that way we're on all on the same page and we'll work, you know, really more just talk with Jessica just to let her know, hey, we're going to work this side of it and this is what it looks like. We'll put that agenda together for her. I think um, with the recording that will allow us when when a new committee or board or uh, is appointed um, or a new member is elected or appointed, then they can watch the recording as well. So I think that that helps us in that situation. Okay. And then I just want to but again, just for people at home who aren't necessarily seeing this, um, a, a large uh, portion of the handbook is absolutely dedicated to knowledge about open meeting law mm -hmm. and transparency, uh, in addition to the behavioral aspects of being on a committee or, or a board. Um, so this is um, absolutely part of the select board's response to concerns about you know, making sure everybody's aware of and following open meeting law going forward. So this is part of our methodology to improve that. Absolutely. And is what we just voted on um, the code of conduct guidelines, is that that's in supplement to 9.1? I, I don't have- Which a, is the standards of conduct? Yeah, it would be, it, the code of conduct is gonna be a supplement to the handbook. So okay. just to be clear. To make sure that we're covering all of our legal bases. Yeah. <laughs> Sue Kowalski wants to speak. Oh, hi, Sue. Uh, in addition to uh, Lisa Mead or one of our attorneys doing kind of seminars, I know Maya has seminars on open meeting law that are at no cost to us as well. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, I understand that. Boards and committees, you know, they're not paid, and sometimes uh, it's difficult to get um, everybody to uh, a single seminar or whatever. But we could schedule something with Maya as well as an alternate. Agreed, and thank you for that, Sue. I think uh, you know this is an opportunity for us to set all of our board and committee members up for success. That's Absolutely. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, so since this is the second viewing of a rather significant handbook, but, um, but we did see it before. And so um, I'm prepared to make a motion that we accept the Hadley Board Commission Committee Handbook um, 2023 as um, final. Second. Motion by Molly. Second by... Jane, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Roll call vote, Keegan? Yes. Chungalo? 
Yes. Parsons? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Iser? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for your time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good you night. Thanks, Troy. All right. Um, moving on to town administrator's report. Okay. I'm just going to, you do have a written report there. And I just want to highlight a few of those items. Um, and, and of course, you're aware of how the weather has impacted Hadley. And I just wanted to um, just show my appreciation and as well as on behalf of you all for all of the involvement of the concern for the residents, the businesses, the farmers, the properties. Um, fire department, DPW, um, boots on the ground, going door to door, Aquavita, Honeypot, the farmers to make sure that people were all set with um, uh, their propane takes were, were secure at any electrical hazards. They made sure of all that, all of that. I actually followed up again today. Um, right now there's no safe, no life safety concerns or building code issues, but they'll still stay on board. So really it was great and Representative, Cum I'm sorry, uh, Senator Comerford and Dan Carey uh, and Representative Dan Carey were also on the grounds along with some state officials as well. So there is a, a recovery, we put it on the website um, that there is, that was provided by Senator Comerford uh, and it's uh, it's on the website. If there are some resources that municipality, I mean, bus businesses or residents or farmers need, um, there is a flood recovery focus, so mm -hmm. people can do that. I had a resident question if there's some way they can give to help. I am sure there probably is. Um, that's kind of a, we could ask uh, our Senator or if they are aware of any nonprofits okay. that they could give to. Thank you. Is our Ag Commission um, directly involved? I'm wondering if they have more of a role to play here. Yeah, because I know MDAR is rolling out stuff as well as the USDA. Right. Yeah. That, that may be a part of that that resource. I'm not sure. Yeah, you answer that. And then, as you are aware, that recent silver alert of the older ge gentleman who um, was missing since yesterday morning was found through due diligence from public safety, as well as neighboring towns pulling together. So that was really good news to hear. And our .gov transition, thanks to Jennifer, who helped coordinate that. We had a, a few little hiccups, but uh, lots of patience was shown by staff and um, whenever technology is involved. <laughs> And there's a transition. There's always a little some hiccups. So that is complete. And I wanted to give you an update on the fiber. I talked with Chief Spanknable, but they are still waiting for a couple of poles to be relocated due to the Route 9 construction. And as soon as that's done, uh, our vendor will have um, uh, the ability to finish that final section to the mall, and which will allow the access for the public public safety repeater. Uh, the ambulance, we are still waiting on the state. They have um, a couple things that they still need to do, and, and most importantly, the license for that, but it's we're waiting. And the compensation study that's moving forward, Troy will be working with Collins Center to set up all of the interviews with all of the employees, go over their job descriptions, their roles, um, and their titles. Uh, just an update on special town meeting. I did want to just bring to the highlight again our community development block grant projects, which includes the uh, the housing rehabilitation and housing aging in place. Uh, we are the lead agency with, with South Hadley. Um, we're, we need to uh, help Pioneer Valley Planning Commission step up that outreach. So we're going to put a couple signs out. Um, I guess I have authority to approve on, on that court, this area. Um, and also the, the website, uh, Jennifer put some things up from Pioneer Valley to get edu people educated if they to learn more about that. Um, and then the Hadley ADA self-evaluation and transition plan that is in progress, but I don't have an update from that. All, all done by uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Can we get information to hand out at the senior center? You have information here, yes. Here? Okay. Yep. From the very beginning, yes. He did connect with Haley, I said. Okay. Yeah, Great. Haley's actually been very helpful with the other program, the ADA self-evaluation. Um, I'm not gonna go over all the other things, uh, so, uh, well, I'll, I'll let you know where the procurement is. Uh, no bids were received for the COA solar project. Jennifer's reached out to a couple bidders, hasn't heard back on what some of the roadblocks are. Uh, and she's reached out to the inspector general's office to get some assistance on what we can do next with that. Um, the town hall columns are advertised. They received um, several requests 
um, but we won't know until the bids are due. And then Russell's school should be going to legal tomorrow. So Excellent. that's where we are. Excellent. All right. Thanks for doing the report. You're welcome. <laughs> now, it's good to have a, yep. a checklist. And it's good for me. It's good for me. So, and, oh, I will be adding, I'm, I always put at the bottom, it's not exclusive, but I will be adding to it because um, there are some DPW things that Scott's been working with that I would like to bring back more often than when he's able to come and do an update. All right. Items for future discussion, green communities. As liaison, I'll just say that we're hoping to be able to work on grant um, organization and how to spend the money and bring that up at the next meeting. We have more information. Okay. So that Jane, is can you explain how that works? Um, so hopefully um, we have to be very we, careful. Yeah, that's not on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. Oh, it's for the future. It's so for I don't the future. think we could discuss it. We'll discuss it at our next meeting. That's what it says. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, does anyone have a, a liaison report for us? Nope. Okay. Um, nope. Okay. Not really anything burning. Yeah. Um, announcements. Um, I have one. Yeah. The Alex put together a flyer for us for the boards and vacancies. Mm -hmm. uh, boards and committees vacancies and we'll be posting that on the website tomorrow morning just blasting it out to everybody and um hopefully y'all have a big appointment list for your next meeting but that's ready to go out and i think carolyn was going to do the press release for it so. all right throw it on the hadley community page <laughs> all right are there any other announcements okay I do have a couple of um, passings. I don't know if I mentioned it at the last meeting about Joe. Waskevich passing, the elder uh, Mart matriarch of uh, JJ Waskevich Farms. Uh, he did pass. Um, so um, our condolences to the Waskevich family. It's, it wasn't in Hadley, but um, he's been well known throughout the community throughout these years. So did want to send our condolences to his family. Uh, we had a Victoria Cazera. Um, husband is Don Cazera. She had lived here and in Hatfield and um, was a part of our community at a point. And then there's a Kathleen um, LaBarge from Hatfield. Uh, her son, Leslie Jr. and wife, Yvonne, live here in Hadley. So our condolences to their family also. And I could say the Brunel family also on the passing of uh, Mr. Brunel. Um, Brunel Marina, um, after the tragic loss over there, um, and then in the midst of it of his passing too. So his condolences also to their family. Okay. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> motion by Molly. Second by Jane. Roll call vote. Part uh, Egan. Yes. Chuggalo? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. And Iser? Yes.